Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Mbaki. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We'd like to start our program soon and in the best ways and with the best manners. So inshallah, could we please uh, come to attention and in remembrance of our dear Sheikh Hassan Sisa Dadi Lao Anhu, uh, one of my dear brothers and one of my dear friends. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. So inshallah, if we could have everyone um, sit in their respective places and come to some form of attention for the sake of our dear Sheikh, I think it will be befitting of us. So on that note, alhamdulillah, uh, our dear Sheikh, Sheikh Hassan Sisa radiallahu anhu, and in remembrance of him and in commemoration of him in this program, I'd like to invite one of my dear brothers, a dear brother who studied Quran who was younger, and he came back older to study Quran for the sake of Allah, uh, one of the sons of one of the earliest students and one of, one of those who were able to witness the light of Sheikh Sayyidi Ali and Sisa, Imam Saeed, our dear brother uh, who really doesn't need any introduction, uh, a beautiful reciter, one who loves Quran, who has learned Quran in his teaching, Sheikh Hassan Sisa radiallahu anhu always used to tell us that the best of mankind are those who have learned Quran and taught it and I can bear witness that he has taught it. So amongst uh, those who have studied in Quran, I'd like to invite our dear brother Zaki Abdul Salam to open with Quran and Quran, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تزنوا وعبشوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَعِيمٍ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا سيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه وداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم صدق الله العظيم الفاتحة
Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah Sallallahu ala sayyidin Muhammad al-Fatim al-Mughlaq Wal khatim al wasabaq al asr haqi bahaq Wal hadi ila salatu qal mustakimi Wa ala alihi haqa qadrihi wa magdara al-azim We welcome you my dear brothers and sisters and children in Islam to the fifth annual Sheikh Hassan Sise commemoration. Uh, this theme that we had for Sheikh Hassan Sise, Rajilau Anhu, and the Walaf, they say that something that's Yatu, when something is expansive, Sheikh Hassan was truly an expansive human being. Sheikh Hassan Sise, Rajilau Anhu, who used to teach us that there were some people who were created for things, and he said some people were created for generosity, and surely he was a generosity and a blessing to creation. Surely Sheikh Hassan Sise, radiallahu anhu, uh, was one in which who could be a very great and one of the best examples we could have here in America, and he was a best example for us in getting to show us the reality and know the reality of Allah and getting to know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our theme for this year is Sheikh Hassan's legacy of promoting Islam by serving humanity. Serving humanity in such a way that it never ended. Serving humanity in such a way that he welcomed Americans who were here, who, who lived in a society and we know of that is downtrodden, and he lifted us. He lifted us with Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdu wa la sharika la. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lifted us with Quran al Kareem. He lifted us with the remembrance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lifted us with the culture that we learned in Senegal. He lifted us in the way in which we were able to live Islam, to see Islam, to smell Islam, to taste Islam, to walk Islam, to get to know Quran. This is the type of man that we're commemorating today. This man was one who promoted Islam in every action, word, and deed until his very last breath. He made all of his salah, fajr, dhuha, asr, maghrib, and isha. This is a man in all of his waking state. He did everything for the sake of Allah. And so therefore, this is a person that we're commemorating. And we are part of his legacy. All of you who were able to see him are part of his legacy. All of you who were able to hear the rumble in his voice, see the smile upon his face, see the way in which he walked. Sheikh Hassan, I'm almost six feet, Sheikh Hassan would walk and I would have to jog after him. This is a man that we follow to Salat at Fajr for the sake of Allah. How many children are waking up, running to their imams, or running to their fathers, so they can remember Allah and say, La ilaha illallah to the masjid. This type of man can invigor love in the hearts of children, in the hearts of elders, and he had love for women. This is a man who made a way in which young women could learn Quran and Quran. And many of the societies in America, and many of the groups in America, some of them don't have a place for women. They don't have a place for them to learn it or learn Quran, and this is the type of man that we have. Also, uh, in this gathering today, I would like to say that Sheikh al-Hajj Ibrahim Yas, in his ziyara, Ziyara al-Hamd, and in the Book of Mind of Wisdom, he reminded us, he said that at the time in which he had his ziyara, in which he was not present, then Allah was with him. This ziyara is for Sheikh Hassan. He's not able to be with us. But wallahi, Allah is with us. Every person here came here for his name and for his sake. So when I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be a witness for you and a bearer for you and he will raise you and never lower you, push you forward and never pull you back, strengthen you and never weaken you, heal you and never bring sickness to your heart. And this is uh, me in commemorating Sheikh Hassan Sisa radiallahu anhu. So one of our first speakers uh, of today is our dear sister, uh, Aisha al adwiya who is a founder of Women in Islam, a company and an organiz uh, organization of Muslim women which focuses on human rights and social justice. Sister Aisha organizes and participates in conferences 
symposia and other forums on Islam, gender equity, conflict revolution, cross-cultural understanding, and peace building. She also represents Muslim and women's non-governmental organization of the United Nations forums. Sister Aisha coordinates Islamic input for the preservation of black religious heritage documentaries project of Schoenberg Center for Research in Black Culture. She also serves as a consultant to numerous interfaith organizations and documentary projects on Muslim American experience. Additionally, she serves on the boards of numerous organizations related to the interests of global Islamic community. Alhamdulillah, I've met her personally in some of the gatherings, and alhamdulillah, you can hear the erudition in her words, and you can tell it's coming directly from her heart. And we'd like to invite the sister, sister, uh, sister Aisha al Adiria to come and please share a few words with us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Well, first let me welcome you again to the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you host these important gatherings here at an institution such as the Schomburg Center. So you should consider it as your home away from home and you're always welcome here. I'd like to uh, uh, share a few thoughts with you. I've been asked to talk about spreading Islam through service, social justice, and gender equity. Uh, that really quite literally covers the whole world. Uh, but uh, I do know that uh, Sheikh Amadou Bamba's work uh, was grounded in service to humanity. And I am very closely related to some of the people in this room who actually experienced his generosity and his love uh, directly uh, when they sent their children to uh, Senegal uh, to be guided uh, by him and to learn uh, the basic um, Islamic sciences. So uh, we're deeply indebted uh, to Sheikh Amadou Bamba, the legacy, and all of the children that have sprung up as a result of his incredible uh, legacy. I'll just speak very uh, briefly about the importance of service to humanity uh, because uh, that's actually what we are here for. And we know that we're living in a time of strife and uh, uh, we understand that the way people come to know us is through our actions rather than our words. So it's important that we, uh, again, emulate Sheikh Amadou Bamba's example by being of service to those people around us. And through that example, uh, we're... Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> I'm speaking about Sheikh Amadou Bamba, Sheikh Hassan Sisi. Uh, they are both eminent uh, scholars and uh, spiritual guides in our community of Muslims. Um, the issue of social justice is one that's very dear to my heart uh, because it's the work that I do, and I suppose we could consider it as a form of uh, uh, social service, uh, but it speaks more directly to human rights uh, and social justice. So again, the way that we can build our presence and our deep resonance in the societies where we live is by being prepared to stand up for what is right uh, as we are commanded in Quran to do. And again, uh, women have to be uh, inclusive of this process. Uh, women are at the forefront of leading uh, all of the world's uh, movements in terms of building solid foundations for their children and their families to grow in. So uh, they are already doing this kind of work and it's now time for us to move the envelope a, a bit forward and make these women visible, uh, make sure that they have a platform, a uh, seat at the table when we talk about community development uh, and peace building. And again, I, as I said, many of uh, us already know women who are heading organizations globally, uh, and they are doing it 
uh, in a magnificent way with very few resources, uh, and they're still managing to provide an example that the world can point to. So I cannot stress enough the importance of making sure that women are included in this process of peace building and community development. And once again, I will say, and especially to younger generations, that uh, knowledge of our tradition, the Islamic sciences, is really critical in terms of the work that we have to do in the world. Uh, many of us see ourselves as activists, uh, very clever on the internet, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so forth. Uh, it's important also that we build those communities on the ground where we live. Uh, there's no substitute for human contact. So again, it's important that we develop those circles of knowledge and light and understanding locally where we live, uh, make sure that our children are socialized in those environments so that when they grow up and become leaders in the world, uh, they already understand the importance and the significance of giving back to the communities that they come from. So again, I welcome you to the Schomburg Center. I'm honored to be here with you and I look forward to the rest of the program. Thank you so much. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. Alhamdulillah, let's please give her uh, another hand uh, for her presentation. And let's thank uh, Sister Aisha al for coming. Um, Alhamdulillah, and also, uh, an introduction for someone who's special to me and special to my heart. Um, uh, my, I call her my Umi. As you may know that I call most of the mothers Umi to me. My mother, most of you don't know, my mother passed when I was 15 years old. And within the past year, my grandmother of 92 years passed. So the mothers that I got to know are women like uh, Yafatima Zahra. Yes, they were mothers to me. And um, there's a key factor in that. And in introducing uh, one of the uh, many people who helped me to get to Senegal and get close to Sheikh Hassan Sisse, um, the wife of my dear Imam, Imam Salim Joseph, uh, Dr. Karima Joseph, uh, who is a family practice doctor, uh, who is a graduate of Wayne State, and who has been, giving, who has been going to Senegal since 1985, and, and went to Senegal uh, just for the sake of Allah and to get closer to a Sheikh and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of Quran and sending their children. Imam Salim Joseph and Dr. Karima Joseph have sent many of their children and have a great and special blessing of having three of their grandchildren born directly in Senegal, West Africa, and Medina Bay. So alhamdulillah, without further ado, we'd like to invite um, our dear uh, uh, Dr. Karima Joseph to give us a few words, inshallah, on our dear Shaykh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I have been asked to speak on the topic of the importance of service in Islam, Sheikh Hassan's work to increase access to health care. Sheikh Hassan, radiallahu anhu, is an excellent Muslim, a great Tajani, a consummate Sheikh, and a renowned humanitarian. He taught us that to bring peace to Allah's servants, we must relieve their suffering by any means that is within our power. If they are hungry, feed them. If they are sick, heal them. If they are destitute, shelter them, bringing peace to humanity one servant at a time. He taught us to avoid harming Allah's servants, for to harm the servant is the opposite of peace. Sheikh Hassan often quoted the Quranic verse, whoever kills a person unjustly, it is as though he has killed all of, the man, all of mankind. And whoever saves a life, it is as though he had saved all of mankind. We know that Sheikh Hassan fed the hungry, relieved the suffering of the destitute, and brought readily accessible health care to not only his community in Medina by Kaulai, but to underserved communities all over the world. Seeing the suffering of the people, Sheikh never missed a chance to advocate for improved health care for the people of Senegal. In the early 1990s, Sheikh Hassan ran ad hoc clinics 
approximately three times a year with the help of a group of dedicated volunteer doctors and nurses recruited by his American students, Zakia Mariun, Radi Lahu Anhu, and Dr. Khadija Askari. In 1997, in partnership with UNPFA, under the umbrella of AAII, Sheikh Hassan established Shifa El Iskam Socio Medical Center in Medina Kalak. Shifa provides services that include preventative care, which consists of maternity services, newborn, newborn and early childhood exams, immunizations, and nutrition services. He also, it also provides treatment for infectious diseases such as malaria, gastroenteritis, meningitis, etc. The people also have access to treatment for chronic diseases such as diabetes and hypertension. Shifa also provides ongoing staff training and education and patient education at each point of contact at each visit, which is very important. By the year 2005, Shifa El Iskam had 18 satellite clinics. By 2008, there were 22 satellite clinics. Under the AAII, in partnership with AmeriCares and the Senegal Ministry of Health, Shifa El Iskam med uh, distributes medical supplies and medicine to its satellite clinics and to health facilities throughout Senegal. In 2008, U.S. Doctors for Africa donated a mobile clinic to AAII which continues to serve rural communities throughout Senegal, staffed by doctors and students from the University of Haji Ibrahim Nias Medical School in Dakar, which was founded by Sheikh El Haj Hassan Sisse. In April 2008, Sheikh Hassan was appointed Ambassador of Goodwill for the promotion of child survival and maternal breastfeeding by UNICEF and the Senegal Ministry of Health. Sheikh's many contributions in improving access to health care for underserved populations are numerous. In addition to those already discussed, he spearheaded the fight against female genital mutilation. In, and in 1999, the Senegalese parliament voted to ban FMG. He also impacted the practice in several other countries in West Africa. He took up the cause of women suffering from rectovaginal fistulas, a debilitating disability affecting primarily young women who give birth at an early age and women who suffer with prolonged childbirth. He educated the people about HIV AIDS at multiple conferences around the world. In 2006, at the invitation of the president of Nigeria, the World Health Organization and the Organization of the Islamic Conference, Sheikh Hassan embarked on a campaign encouraging the people of Nigeria to have their children immunized against polio. In June 2007 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, he gave a speech entitled, The Role of Religious Leaders in the Eradication of Polio. Here are a few excerpts. I would encourage you to go to tajani.org and read the entire contents. And this is Sheikh Hassan in his own words about service and health care. We are only striving in this cause out of emulation of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, who comprehended the role of religious guides as protectors of the health and well-being of humanity. Following in the footsteps of the Prophet wasalam, we recognized that we had an obligation to inform local religious leaders about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine and to elicit their cooperation and commitment to encourage their respective communities to immunize their children. Supported by our knowledge of Quran, Hadith, Islamic jurisprudence, and esteem among Muslims internationally, in November 2006, we embarked on a three-week campaign to sensitize religious and governmental leaders and the people of the region to the necessity of immunizing their children against polio. In an effort to reach as many people as possible with the message that immunization was a duty parents owe to their children in accordance with ayats of Quran and Hadith of the Prophet wasalam, we successfully utilized broadcasts and print media to disseminate information about the safety and efficacy of the polio vaccine. We refer to mankind's mission on earth, which is to worship Allah, and since human beings are composed of flesh and soul, each must be cared for properly. It has been related in a hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a strong believer is better and more lovable to Allah than a weak believer, although there is good in both. We emphasize that the Muslim Ummah must take as much responsibility for its physical health as it does for its spiritual health. 
and quoted the hadith of the Prophet wasalam, seek remedy for sickness, for Allah did not send an illness for which he did not also send a remedy. We stated that the ability to prevent a disease is a mercy from Allah, and quoted from the Quran, which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? From Surah to Al-Rahman. We explain that Allah enjoins the believers to seek protection for themselves and their families. Allah says, do not harm yourselves. And elsewhere, he says, do not kill your children. Immunization is a way of seeking protection for your children, and surely protection, prevention is better than cure. We explain that as Muslims, it is our duty not to harm anyone, and that the benefits of having halted the spread of polio will reach us on this earth and in the hereafter, for Allah says in Quran, and if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of the whole people. We not only encourage religious leaders to become actively involved in promoting immunizations against polio, we encourage them to establish non-governmental organizations for the purpose of developing humanitarian programs and projects. In a world driven by greed and marred by corruption, religious leaders can bring moral compass to the issues affecting humanity. At the same time, through the work of their organizations, they will provide a view of Islam as a peaceful, compassionate religion whose adherents worship Allah and serve mankind. That is Sheikh's own words. We pray that Allah will bless us to follow in the path of his blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our beloved Sheikh Hassan provides us with the best example of how to tread this path. May we be blessed to be among those who are created to serve his servants and may he protect us from causing them harm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Takbir. 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 We're thankful for that um, uh, beautiful presentation of Dr. Karima Joseph and her uh, speaking upon the great works of Sheikh Hassan Sisi in the spirit of Islam and peace by increasing access to health care. Um, I'd also like to note <coughs> that um, some of my beautiful sisters are here and that um, at this present time, we have those, uh, the offspring of Sheikh Hassan Sisa. They say that the son or the daughter of a lion is a lion in Senegal. So we have a beautiful Fatima Sisa here. We have a Yarbaqi Sisa here. We also have Yarbaqi. It's a, it's a beautiful thing that I, I can, and many of us here can call them our sisters. And not only sisters in Islam, but sisters because the Sheikh always used to say to us that the Ibn Ruh Afdal than the Ibn Dam. He said that the child of the soul is even better at times than the child of the blood. And surely we call Sheikh Hassan Sisi um, our father, and we have our sisters here. So could we please uh, give a hand to those uh, who are here at Oswin with Sheikh Hassan Sisi? Also, in respect to that, we have um, some distinguished guests with us today. And one I would like to mention and invite to give us a few words is from the Senegalese consulate, a representative of Haji Ndo, who is a representative of, of Makisal, the president of Senegal. And we'd like to invite him to come. Please give us a few words, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أخلق والحاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والحادي إلى سراتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار عظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Brothers and sisters in Islam It is a pleasure and honor indeed for me to stand before you and speak uh, on an occasion that Sheikh Hassan Sisi is comm commemorated. A tribute that is given to Sheikh Hassan is certainly well deserved. I did not prepare a speech <laughs> coming here today. I did not even plan to speak. But when I'm asked to say a few words on this type of occasion, it's certainly an honor that cannot be refused. The brother spoke about expansion, speaking of Shah Hassan, and that's what he meant. That's what he was. But in, he did it in such a humble way that it was breathtaking. I've had 
the honor to have visited him in Medina Bay. And the first thing that would strike you is the humility with which he welcomes people. And I, I, I am certain this is the reason why we have such a great group of human beings who, uh, through his teachings, based on peace, tolerance, uh, respect for human being. I believe that's the reason why we have such a beautiful group here, coming here on a Saturday afternoon and celebrating you know, what he meant, celebrating his legacy. I cannot close without recognizing the presence of Mr. Ibrahim Oso, who is the president of the Association of Senegalese in America, along with Mr. Ba. And uh, uh, allow me also to pay my respect to the family of Shah San Sise, and also to the family of uh, Shah Ibrahim Munyas, and uh, to all the families of uh, great leaders uh, of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, and with the blessing of uh, and what we learned and we were engulfed in in Senegal, West Africa, uh, I'd like to invert a little, I remember um, being a young Muslim and coming into Islam and fighting to be called African, wearing African clothing. At one time I even had a nose ring. And one of the most fascinating and almost disappointing things happened when I went to Senegal is when they saw me, they called me American. They called me American. But alhamdulillah, I stayed long enough where they said, you're African. So we have that blessing there. And within the generations of my family and my father coming there, there were a few generations who were able to come back to Africa. And all of us, therefore, should go back. And just as the brother said with Sheikh Hassan Sise, the greatest things, three things I've learned in Africa were respect, manners, and patience. And I learned this from Sheikh Hassan Sise. There's not much respect here in America. Everybody's impatient. We know that we're in New York. Mm -hmm. And manners have gone right out the window. And on that note, I'd like to also uh, uh, invite our dear brother, Ibrahim Asso, who is a representative, representative of, uh, of the Senegalese Association, as the brother spoke, uh, has said. I'd like to invite him to give a few words, inshallah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in Africa, I would like to say my greetings to each one here, woman and man. It is with a great pleasure and humility that I am here speaking to you today very, very impressed by what I am seeing. I knew for long years that Shah Ahmad uh, Hassan Sise have done a great job within Senegal. And I knew also for years and years that he had a lot of followers and people that he shared his teachings and his knowledge in America. But I wasn't expecting that such a great gathering and so many people was he embraced their life. It is uh, with a lot of pride, knowing that a countryman of, my, of ours, somebody from Africa, not saying somebody from Senegal, where we are from, have done such a great job. We really thank him, and we also thank you for recognizing the work that he have done. What makes us even more happier, I, I would say, is whatever he gave to you, you gave it back here in New York, in Atlanta, in Philadelphia. What we say in Wolof, uh, the person who receives you, who is your Nyatigi, 
Your Nyachigi being your host when you come, you know, land that you know nobody. He was your Nyachigi in Senegal. You guys have been our Nyachigis here. You receive us in Harlem. You make us feel comfortable in Philadelphia. You make us feel comfortable in Atlanta. You make us feel comfortable all over the U.S. in a way that make us so comfortable and so productive that we could help back our brothers and sisters that are back home. For that, we would like to thank you. Uh, not to be long, this is a great gathering. We would just would like to have more of these events. We also would like to have, if those events have to happen again, more involvement of the Senegalese community. Like we say, I am the president of the Senegalese Association. You have the Senegalese consulate in, in, the, in New York, who pre, pretty much is the most important representative of the Senegalese government. We would like to know more about what your activities, what you're doing, and make sure not only the family of Shah Ashan Sise is involved, but the whole Senegalese community in the US is involved in such important manifestation. Thank you so very much for having us tonight. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. At this point in the program and moving on and, 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 and thanks to in commemoration of Sheikh Hassan Sisa Ridullah Anhu and us being um, in this lost wilderness of America, we're so thankful that we were able to go to a community who liked the Ansar, who's helped us and who accepted us with open arms. Um, personally, as an American, an African born here in America, because really you all are African Americans, they're Africans who are here in America. <laughs> we, um, we're thankful to you all that we feel like we can go home. Africa is not a far place to me. That's home and I'm visiting here. Not many of my friends can say I can go back to Africa and be home. Wallahi, like you say the Njatiki or the host, the best of hosts that we had were the Senegalese. And Alhamdulillah, we're thankful for that. Also, there are many communities in America and in the love of our Sheikh and in the remembrance of our Sheikh and even in his, past, his, his, his passing, the love was great. And one of those great and beloved communities were, was the community of Imam Warathdin Muhammad, radiallahu anhu. Sheikh Hassan and him met often and they spoke often. Many of you don't know that uh, Al Haji, I mean, uh, uh, that the movement of Sheikh Al Haji Ibrahim Yas and the movement of Elijah Muhammad started around the same time in the 1930s. This thing went neck and neck. There's a beauty and a connection that we had. He was bringing people to Islam, and Sheikh Ibrahim was bringing people to Allah. So this link is something that is unbreakable to the point where not long after the passing of Sheikh Hassan a month or so, Imam Warhuddin Muhammad, radiallahu anhu, he passed. This is a great thing, and it shows a love. So this community, there are many people within our, in their, their community who have come to learn in Senegal, uh, some of the imams, Imam Sabri, and also Imam Suleiman Hamid is a resident imam of the Atlanta Masjid of Al-Islam, one of the largest Islamic centers in the Southeast affiliated with the community of his late teacher, Imam Warafdin Muhammad. He has taught Arabic and Islamic sciences at the Muhammad schools and Islamic theology and Islamic law for the Faith Institute in Atlanta. Hamid, uh, uh, imam Suleiman Hamid received his specialized training under the tutelage of Grand Mufti Sheikh Ahmed Koftaro of Damascus from Abu Nur University. He completed courses in jurisprudence, Arabic prophetic traditions, and theology. His studies and teachings has afforded him travel opportunities in Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, and also Senegal. And as a beloved brother in Islam and a beloved uh, community uh, in America, I'd like to invite our dear Imam Suleiman Hamid to give a few words, insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. You all look extremely beautiful. I want to say that. 
let me begin uh, by giving my greetings to Imam Saeed and his family, uh, the other elders, the family of Sheikh Hassan, and all of the other leaders who are here in the room. I'm from Atlanta, as was, as was mentioned. Uh, in Atlanta, we have a joke. Me and my brother, uh, Usman Dempson, I think you all know him, right? We say the Atlanta Masjid and Masjid Taqwa are sister masjids. You see everybody at uh, Juma at the Atlanta Masjid, then you go to Masjid Taqwa for Dhikr Juma, and everybody is there in the night. So we're there, uh, we're together. We have had the pleasure of being hosted in uh, Medina, Medina Bay, uh, as was mentioned, you know, we come from a history where it is important that we recognize our own scholars and that we celebrate our own scholars. And we have Sheikh Ibrahim to celebrate. We have Sheikh Hassan to celebrate. We have Imam Sheikh to celebrate. We have Sheikh Mahi to celebrate. Also was mentioned, we've seen the document of Imam Muradin Muhammad and Sheikh Hassan who instructed our communities to work together. So we're working to bring that into uh, light, to bring that into reality. Uh, we're honored to be here with you all this evening to celebrate the great legacy of Sheikh Hassan. We ask Allah to bless you and bless us all as we continue to live this great work of Al-Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum Alhamdulillah. And also, uh, one of the greatest things that I also learned in Senegal was erudition, the, the amount of knowledge that came into writing poetry. And one of the greatest things that I used to see amongst my brothers and sisters studying in Senegal, and especially the Mauritanian Jumat, is that at times, in love, they would come in front of the sheikh, and in the respect to him and love of him, they will write a quick poem in respect to him. We know this is a, a, a reality that is strong in Senegal with the likes of Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba, with the likes of Sheikh al Haji Maliksi, with the likes of Sheikh al Haji Ibrahim Yas, with the likes of Sheikh al Haji Nur Tal, with the likes of Sheikh Omar Futur Tal. This is a great an inspirational thing that we have within this uh, within Islam, and it is something that the Prophet loved. There is a, a a saying in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when some people would recite poetry, he would make a groan and he he would encourage them. He would feel that and invigor that. So, in the respect to this, and every year in the commemoration of Sheikh Hassan Sisay, we've invited one of the dear poets in our community to invigor our hearts. Alhamdulillah, the brother uh, that I will be introducing today, uh, he became, he's been Muslim for a few years now, and um, under the tutelage of Imam, uh, Imam Salim Joseph, coming into the Islam, coming into the tariqah, and to a point, and even getting to know the divine gnosis and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has been, then, been a dear brother and friend to me. To the point in his studies, of learning about Sheikh Hassan Sise, whom he never met by fest, but saw in dream, him and his wife. This is the true love of the Sheikh. He even wrote a short poem or book of poems called Minka Ileka, from you to you. And this is one of the things that is uh, uh, attributed to Sheikh Al-Hajj ibn Yas. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, my dear brother, Yashir Atuk. Um, who has performed uh, in many venues around the world, who has been uh, a part of many youth slams or poetry slams. And now that he's entered within the depth of Islam, it's invigorated his heart to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get to know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to get to know the likes of Sheikh Hassan Sise. And one of the greatest things that he said in his life was coming into this community and especially getting to meet uh, Sheikh Mahsi Sise and Sheikh Imam Tijani Sisei, so I'd like to invite our dear brother, um, Yashua Tuck, to come up and please give us a few short poems. As 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, like I finally said, I never got a chance to meet Sheikh Hassan Sisei, Rallahu Anhu, in the flesh. But wallahi, by spending a short amount of time in Senegal, I was able to see him through the people there, through the sheikhs there, and through Sheikh Mari Sisei, and through Sheikh Imam Tijani Sisei, and also through uh, Imam Salim and Kafani and my community uh, of Detroit. And also, when the sheikhs come to, uh, to America, and uh, when the communities from all over the United States come together, I'm able to see Sheikh Hassan Sisse in all of you as well. And uh, so I wrote a collection of poems that attempts to capture the reality of love, which is one of the greatest services to humanity that we can have. And also, as Kafani spoke about earlier, it is also something that can expand your heart. And uh, I'm going to read a series of poems. Um, I'm just going to read them, read them continuously, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I've seen you at the nearest point and drew nearer at the distance of two arms. I became a true believer, seeing all the truth encompassed by your embrace. Love upon love, who can extinguish this? Each gate of my heart opening as I ascended and was welcomed with greetings of peace. Your face becoming clearer and clearer as I pass through each veil, purified until there is nothing left but love, nothing but you. You held me in your arms and I became your greatest secret. I looked in your eyes and saw the most subtle mysteries reveal themselves. All of a sudden, this moment of purity vanished, commanded and ashamed to go back so close to eternity, so close to that greatest ecstasy, the everlasting companionship, I stare into your eyes seeking the greatest truth. Your voice is my guide as well as my tether to reality. While I am submerged in a sea of surreal, sto surreal stories, soaked in the hidden truth within scriptures, wrapped in pages like blankets that support slumber. But these sheets seize sleep, and send me into a wonderful whirlwind of dreams with streams that taste sweet, like the freshly, free, like the freshly squeezed fruits that the words conceive. Beneath the dirt, within the seed, is where I am seen, the first to be planted, the last to be harvested, the only metaphoric message scribbled on the insides of my eyelids, and you, you are the one who deciphers me. You are the one who deciphers me, the narrator of my sleeping journal, the explanation of my insomnia, the concentration of my confusion, the direction of my movement, the shore, the island, and the water as well, the pen, the pages, and the syllables that gather. By, bring us near, and let us drink from your upward waves palms. Show us our reflections in the water in your hands. Show us your reflection and the water in our hands. Show us the ripples that emanate because of your voice. Your prayers make the water move. Our prayers make the water move. Teach us the meaning of those ripples. Show us the ripples affecting our reflections. Show us the sun that evaporates and raises all water to perfection. And this is the reason why you have our affection. The flood is in your hands. By, you are a fresh water ocean that has flooded the earth, and we are parched and withered. That is why we come to you in crowds. You built a well in Medina, but also in our hearts. So when we are far from your city, we are still submerged in your flood. You are the closest, and you bring us as close as yourself. You let us drink from where you drink. You give us what is kept hidden. You give us the eternal elixir that revitalizes our senses and dilates the pupils of our hearts. You are a freshwater ocean that has covered the earth. 
and has reached beyond the atmospheres, wetting all of the stars. You are close and you bring us near. By teach me the secret of love. Point to the moon. Show me the symbol of him. Point to your heart. Show me where love is. Point to my heart. Show me where you are. Point to the moon. Point to your heart. Point to my heart. Point to his heart. Show me where I am. Show me what is love. Show me who I am. Your sight is a serum for my eternal illness. A sip from your well fills my heart. You are the cause and cure of this disease. The closer I get, the further I am from recovery. This yearning is intense. I walk towards you, feeling and understanding your closeness. Still yearning for a more intense intimacy. Stay with me and never leave my sight. I swear that this is the most beneficial of all afflictions. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Takbir. 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 And it's something that our dear brother uh, Abdul Majib taught us, especially when their words coming directly from the heart. Uh, in the remembrance of our check and uh, in the remembrance of us being here in New York, uh, we have a representative of the New York City Council in this area of Harlem uh, from the 9th District, Sister Inez, Inez e. Dickens. Uh, we'd like to ask her and invite her to come up and give us a few words. And um, we're thankful for uh, the community of Harlem and also thankful for, to New York and Schomburg for giving us the chance to give a commemoration to the Sheikh in a place such as this, in an area such as this, and in a city such as this. Mm -hmm. As-salamu alaykum. Today, I join you as we recognize the renowned Islamic scholar and humanitarian, Sheikh Hassan al for the tremendous work on behalf of Muslims and non-Muslims alike. And today, as the entire Muslim community throughout the world is under attack for the behavior of a few, it is an inspiration that our communities must band close together for as we stand united, there is protection in division, we are cut down and apart and killed. We are more alike than we are different. I have visited Senegal several times. And with each of my visits, my eyes were widened and my mind expanded to better understand the global significance of the Muslim works, wonders, and contributions throughout the world. I stand here as an elected from Harlem. I'm a New York City Council member representing Central Harlem, a part of East Harlem, and West of Harlem. I was the first black woman in leadership in the 250 year history of the New York City Council. And as such, I have learned that our communities must continue to work together. We live together. Our children must learn from one another because they are the gardens of our future. They are young, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, are the future in order for all of us to survive. Thank you for allowing me this time. May Allah continue to bless and keep all of you safe. Thank you. <laughs> 